This is a lecture from Open Tuition. In the exam, in question one, you'll have to adjust draft accounts, draft consolidated accounts. It could be a balance sheet, it could be a profit and loss, or it could be a cash flow. The little scenario called topness is about adjusting a cash flow. So what you have in your materials in our website is the details of the scenario and the transactions, the things that have gone wrong, and two spreadsheets. One of them is blank for you to use to attempt the question, and the other one has a solution with some workings in a separate tab. Almost like balance sheets, I mean the cash flow statement ought to balance because I don't think the cash will be wrong. I think everything else will. So I suspect you'll end up with transactions that balance themselves out, but no impact on cash. It's very rare for companies to get that wrong. So what's likely to happen, I'm just making this up, is perhaps you're putting plus five on there and then minus five on there and you get, you know, something that still balances. So some things are different in the presentation, but cash, I suspect, will not change at all. If you haven't yet, pause the recording and have a go at the question on the blank spreadsheet before you have a look at the solution and listen to my commentary. So here we are, transaction one. Two things happened. They bought an associate for cash, which is an investing activity. They paid a dividend to NCI, which is a financing activity. So apparently they've shown both as purchase of associate. So we have to go and have a look at the draft accounts. Purchase of associate will be there. There it is in investing activity. I can see the 700. We now know that some of that relates to a dividend to an NCI. The dividend to NCI ought to be a financing activity. So I need to work that out and you'll use your normal approach where you reconcile the opening and closing balance sheet figures. I can see that my opening and closing balance sheet figures are 500 and 600. Let's just put those into my little working. There we are, 500 and 600. Then you need their share of profit and OCI. Be careful, if you're given TCI, that includes both profit and OCI. That's what you need. So this 250 is the total. That's the number that you need. It includes the 200. So otherwise you'll be double counting. So back in my working, the share of TCI, total comprehensive income 250. The balancing figure that drops out is 150. That's the dividend to the NCI. So I need to remove that from purchase of associate. There we are. And I need to show it separately as dividend to NCI further down. I've programmed this thing to add across automatically just to make your life easier for now. Again, in the exam though, you'll need to either put in a formula or add across manually. You'll need to do that yourself. That's the first transaction. Let's take a look now at the second transaction. When you revalue investment properties, do the gains go to revaluation reserve and other components of equity? No, they go to profit and loss. So that gain should have gone to profit and loss. And of course, 
in the cash flow statement, we do show the profit of the company. So that gain of 200 should have been shown in profit before tax. So coming back to my solution, here we are. There we are, the profit before tax, 200. It is, of course, a non-cash item. So like depreciation going in the other direction is a non-cash item. So it will increase the profit, but then needs to be stripped out. I expect you find that highly irritating. I know I would if I was a student. Well, that's life, isn't it? Life can sometimes be a sausage. You'll have to live with it. I've put a bit more detail of that in the working. There it is. So profit before tax is increased because of the investment property gain. And operating cash flows, of course, go down because that gain or, you know, the, 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 the next line, if you like, decreased because it doesn't affect cash. If you thought transaction two was irritating, though, uh, that's nothing to transaction three. Transaction three, the pension scheme. What you're supposed to do with a pension plan is add back the service cost because it's non-cash and deduct contributions paid. So if they've done things properly, They'll have put the service cost through the accounts in profit. Then you have to add it back because it's non-cash and deduct contributions paid. So when you look at other cash flow questions, what you should normally expect to see up here, let me just highlight this in a different color. Uh, what you should normally expect to see with pensions is the service cost here being added back and induction of contributions paid. The service cost is 25. The contributions paid are 20. But then you're saying, well, well what's happening now? What about the five? They booked the wrong figure in the PL in the first place. Isn't that nasty? So they should have booked through the profit and loss. They should have booked 25. They've only booked 20. So there was an error in the profit and loss in the first place. So the extra five up here is correcting that error. Now I've got effectively a service cost of 25 booked. Add it back again and deduct contributions paid. Even if you don't like that bit, the important thing, the important thing is that you notice um, that always add back the service cost, always deduct pension contributions paid. That, if nothing else, is the learning point. When cash flows adjustments are tested, Many people will make some mistakes. I will, you will. Don't panic. Be calm. Carry on with your life. You're all in the same boat. But try and remember, if you think about it, it should always kind of adjust its, it should always balance itself. Suspect cash won't change. I think you'll make a reasonable job of it.